everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are going to be working on orchids and cats. And this is going to be a large album. It's uh, the outside dimensions are eight and a half. I'm sorry, eight and a half by ten and a half. And the inside pocket pages are uh, going to be uh, ten by eight. Ten by eight. So we're going to get started with page one. Okay, so I've got. A couple of flaps. I need to organize just a little bit better. Sorry about that. There's going to be three flaps on, and I know some of these have tape. Here we go. Three flaps. Uh, there's going to be a left, a right, and then one that's going to come top down. Here it is. Okay. Sorry about that. I should have shuffled through these before I turned the camera on. So let me give you the measurements of each of them. The top down flap is gonna be four and five eighths, four and five eighths by eight. You're gonna score a half inch on the eight inch side. And then you're gonna have two of these, one for the left and one for the right, and these are five inches by eight inches. Score a half inch on the five inch side, so you're gonna have a four and a half inch finished panel. So we're gonna inset these two panels by a half inch. So let's get um, or I'm actually just, uh, let me pull my bin closer to me. I'm just uh, using my grid here as my mark point for, for installing these, excuse me. So I'm just gonna come in about a half inch, not about, a, we're coming in a half inch. So the idea is that these four and a half uh, inch finished panels will meet in the middle. So that's the goal. It's okay if there's a slight gap, but, uh, I'd like for it to kind of close. There we go, looks good. Now we'll do the other one. And the other one, I really don't go in a half inch. What I do is I just push it up against the installed flap and then lay it down on the back side. And I'll show you what I mean. So since I've already got this one installed, I'm just gonna slide this right up, butt it up together like so, and now I'm just gonna lay that down. So um, it may be a half inch, may be slightly off. It looks like I'm right on a half inch. So sometimes it's off a little bit, but it's better to have your two flaps meet because your eyes are gonna be drawn toward the middle, not toward the outside. So even if it's not perfect, um, it'll mask any, any uh, inconsistencies you may have. Okay, so the, the next thing we're gonna do is, and this is a pretty simple page, we're gonna have a top down flap. And I decided to do a top down flap because there's these gray cut aparts in this collection that I wanna feature um, as a closure. And that's what this is gonna be. So it'll have a, a really beautiful design on the front and then plenty of photo space on the back. So again, this is four and five eighths by eight. And we're gonna center it. So I'm gonna draw my center line using my grid, which I, I left my uh, Tim Holtz. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There it is at five. And this is four and five eighths, so it's a little bit harder to come to the center because you've got that extra eighth. So four and a half. Two point two five plus an eighth. Two point two five. So two and actually, I need to do it on this side. Two and three eighths. Okay. Now I'm just going to line up these two dots. I'm going to actually. I'm going to close it because the important thing is, and while I'm closing it, I can still see my dots. The important thing is that I can close both flaps so that this, uh, I just need to make sure that this flap is installed high enough that I can close both of those, okay? And that's one way to do it. So, I mean, and what I'm trying to explain is if I installed this flap a little bit low, um, when I tried to close this over top of these, it, it might do that, okay? So we should, get, should be good. So that is page one. When we get back together, we'll start decorating. Be back soon. 
Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create, and we're working on orchids and cats. And um, just as a reminder, these pocket pages are eight, eight and a half by, oh, I'm sorry, eight by 10. And um, as you, hopefully you remember that we inset the flaps. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add these decorative strips to the left and right, which I've already inked and they're ready to go. Ugh, it's that time of year, we get these stupid little gnats. Um, I have fruit trees, so they sneak in with me and the dog. And they followed me in here. Anything that smells sweet, and I have these candles in here that smell Kind of like passion fruit. They smell very good, but it attracts those stupid flies. So you might see them flying in and out of our shot. Anyway, so if you recall, we inset the flaps, the left and right flaps, a half inch. So we're putting a decorative strip on either side. <clears throat> And I mentioned in uh, one of the other videos, but I'll mention it again. Um, it is June 1st here in San Diego, and um, I live about, I don't know, maybe three or less than three miles away from a military base here in San Diego, um, Miramar. And they're getting ready for um, their sky show. So you may hear some aircraft coming and going in the background. I'll do what I can to minimize that, but it is a very busy time for them. The best light I get is during the day, even with studio lighting. So I like to record during the day for a couple of reasons. One, for lighting. I think it makes um, a difference if you're trying to see if you like the color of the collection. Um, if you're just looking from a technique perspective, I don't think it matters. But if you want to see if you really like the patterns, I think it matters if you get daylight. So I try to film during the day. So we may hear a little bit of that for the next couple of weeks, which is a small price to pay. I'm sure you all agree. And I will do in editing what I can to minimize the background noise. And I know I had uh, gone through a period last year during the summer of just ridiculous air air, uh, air conditioning noise, and I figured that out. But I, there's really not much I can do about the military, and I don't want to. <laughs> so... Another interesting thing going on, at least interesting for me, is um, my son is getting ready to graduate high school. I'm very excited for him. And uh, that's happening, today's June 1st, that's happening on June 13th, which is kind of odd, it's a Sunday. Um, but they're doing things a little differently and I'm just thrilled that he's actually getting a graduation ceremony which none of the kids got last year from his high school. So that's exciting. We're going to do it at the baseball. Um, we have a pro professional baseball team, San Diego Padres, so we're going to do it at Petco Park, which is where they play, and I'm very excited for him. So that's what I'm going to be doing this weekend. Okay, so I had this strip left over, a uh, piece of scrap, and I actually think it's... that didn't stick from a spare piece from the back of this page that I trimmed, but I'm not real sure anymore. Anyway, I had this piece and I cut it in half. No, it's from this, it's from the back of this, which are the two pieces that I'm gonna use on the flaps. So now, um, this just happened to be a strip left over from the back of this. So I trim that down to one inch and now we need to make trim this to fit, which I waited to do until I installed this, which is pretty typical for me. But if you're new, you'll know that. So I really love the Stamperia papers. I think they're beautiful. Mm 
but also one of the things that I've found is that they can be a little difficult to layer because it just gets to be too much. So typically when I do a Stamperia um, album, my mechanisms are not as complex for that reason because I think it's too hard to do too much layering. You lose too much of the paper, if that makes sense. Where when I'm working with graphic, for example, you know, there would be like a stripe or a diagonal or something that's very obviously different from the pattern I'm working against. And I think that makes a big difference. So it looks like I need to trim just a little bit more. Yeah. So ideally, I want the same visual gap that I have here. I know I need to take a little more off on one side than the other, and this I'm gonna hand trim. I'm gonna use a ruler, and a blade. If you're gonna do this with a ruler and a blade, I highly recommend, I have this for centering and I love it. It's not great for trimming because there's no cork on the back, you need a cork on the back to hold your paper in place. And the only reason I use the ruler is because it's so small I can't manage it in the trimmer. The trimmer won't hold it straight. We'll add a little ink on there and we should be able to put this right down. Let's see. Yep. It's actually a little more than I wanted. I'm going to try it the other way. I think that works. Yep. Bigger. This turned out to be more of a gap than I wanted, so I'm going to cheat and I'm actually going to trim a little bit of the cream off. But it's unless you feel very confident with your trimmer, I wouldn't recommend it. But I, I'm feeling comfortable enough, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And the reason why it's difficult is because you have to put the ruler on this side to hold the paper. You can't put it on the other side, and because you're putting the ruler on this side, you can't see how much paper is exposed before you trim. So it's a little bit of a challenge, but I'm gonna do it. There we go. And that, honestly, is just experience. Um, you just have to do it and figure out you know, where to put the blade. So to me, that looks a little better. It's not perfect, but I can live with that. Okay, now, these are our two pieces that are going to go here. And I'm just checking to make sure they fit. And we really do need a contrast sheet. There we go. Looks good. I hope everybody's doing well. I feel like I've been gone forever. I think it's been three weeks by the time you see this video. So for those of you that were interested, uh, the very next video is going to be, uh, I was gonna say Winter Tales, Midnight Tales. That'll be my next project, Midnight Tales from Graphic. And then after that, I'm hoping Uh, 
I'm hoping Well Groomed will be ready because I think that would be fun because I'm doing a cat collection now. It'd be fun to do Well Groomed right after this. So we have something for cat and dog lovers and uh, folks that love both, which I do. Um, I am a, a dog owner, but uh, as a child, I had lots of pets. I had dogs, cats, rabbits, chickens, parrots, and a cat. All of that and just one cat. And ducks. We also had ducks. All right, I'm just about ready to replace my glue. So hopefully this will last long enough to get this in. Then we'll take a break. I'll replace my glue. And then we'll continue working on the album. Nola came to see me and you. Sorry, that's annoying, I'm sure. I think that'll do it. So this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack and it's a continuous pattern. So the pattern is the 12 by 12 covers uh, these four uh, pots and actually a fifth pot. And I've trimmed off the fifth pot. That's what's actually on the spine of the book. Okay. The one thing that's really nice about Stamperia is it doesn't really matter uh, how you lay your patterns in. Every single page goes with every single page. I do think you have to put a little more thought into how you arrange your papers with graphic um, because some of their patterns are so bold. Um, but I also think they make it easy because they give you these, um, the 12 by 12, which is patterns and solids. So you get a little bit of both. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting. And uh, I just realized I forgot to put a magnet down. So I'm gonna put one here and one here right now. I actually meant to put it on the top. And I did not, so it's e easily solved. Um, I'm going to plan on, yeah. It can't be in the middle because of the, the way the two doors come together. And I need tape. So since the last time I did a video, I. I got some new furniture from my craft room, which yay for me. Um, but I'm still <laughs> having a hard time finding things. I've sort of rearranged and I can't figure things out yet. So anyway, um, I was just going through that in my mind quickly that I didn't really know where my magnets were or the tape. Actually, I should have done this the other way. I should have put this down first. And I didn't. But I will. Let's do this. I'm going to hold that there real quick. Now I'm going to close this and pick it up. There we go. That's in and that's in. Okay, now we can go ahead and put our papers on the other side. I'm finding that this is binding just a little bit. Mm, maybe not, maybe not. No, it's okay. Okay, so what I talked about when I first installed this that sometimes uh, one of the other options is to add a second um, score line to create a slight gusset. Um, and that's not a bad idea, but I didn't do that. Um, so if you choose to do that now, you know, might be a good idea. 
but so far it's working. And also I think when th once there's more weight on uh, both the, on all the insides, it'll also close more freely. Okay, so that's the A side for page one. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and I'm back. Um, we took a quick break. I changed my glue, <laughs> which was bothering, I think everyone, including me. And I, sorry, that's Nala. <laughs> it's time for everybody to get home from work. So she's gonna bark a little bit in the background. So I've identified the papers I'm gonna use on the B side of page one. And uh, this is what I'm gonna use here. Then I've trimmed out these two pieces, which are the opposite side of the circles on the 12 by 12 pack. This is also from the 12 by 12 pack. This is gonna be the centerpiece. So that is the plan. So let's go ahead and get it down. I've got ink on everything. So assuming I don't have to um, trim anything, this should go pretty quickly. So again, these two are from the 12 by 12. This is also from the 12 by 12. But honestly, I can't remember what the rest of it looks like. Oh, it's the one with the pots. So this is the flip side of the pots. There we go. Which is what we're using on this side. So there's the pots, there's the flip side. But like I said earlier, honestly, if you use anything from the collection, it always matches. Oh my goodness, this is some serious flow. <laughs> Since I changed my glue, I gotta be careful. I forget that uh, it really makes a big difference. So I'm just flipping it over because I want this part down. And the trim piece on the top. And I'm not pressing hard because I realize I put a lot of glue on there and I don't want it to come squishing out. So I'm just going to lightly tap it, let it dry a little, and then I'll come back and hit it with a bone folder afterwards. Okay. So there's that. Here's the centerpiece. I'm going to be a little careful now that I know that I have so much flow. I'm going to start in the middle. So if that happens to you, there, one of the things you can do is don't tilt the bottle all the way down, but also the speed at which you are moving the bottle makes a huge difference. So I try to use both those techniques when I first change to a new bottle to limit the flow. Because I don't like it when the glue squishes out. Even though it dries matte, you still can see it a little bit. It's better than anything else I've used before, but you still can see it. Okay. Now these two are cut apart from a 12 by 12, so I want to make sure that I put them in the same order. So I just put the sides up together, make sure it's a continuous pattern, dry fit, and then we're going to go ahead and put it down. So I'm going to be careful not to hold it directly down because then I get too much flow. So I'm going to keep it at a nice angle and that will reduce the flow. Oh, no, I came back to grace us with her presence. Like I said earlier, I had changed. I got some new furniture in my office. I love my new desk. The only thing is, I think it's interesting. Um, it's an old desk. It's actually a, a steel case desk. I got a steel case desk, and which is a brand, and um, which is very old actually. Um, and a credenza that matches, which is lovely. I love that because I could get lots of stuff off the counter space. 
and um, get it organized a little bit better so I have surface space to plan with. Um, so I have another, which is actually a, an entry table that doesn't work in this house, but it's 72 inches and it's tall. So I use that as my paper planning table. And um, the only thing is with these, these case pieces is um, they're actually quite low. And I don't consider myself tall and not quite five foot seven. And I have to lower my, my chair so much that my feet or my legs are tucked under me. So it's a little bit different. Um, I haven't quite gotten used to it. But I do like my space and I love having the credenza. But in a perfect world, I'd build it all in and it would be counter height. And I'd never have to get all the way up from a seat position again. That would be my dream. So there you go, page one. So we've got, this is a cut apart from the 12 by 12 collection. I've got two strips here added to extend it so that it reaches over and closes our bifold. And I think that's lovely. And then of course I have these two half inch strips decorating the sides. And honestly, the more I, I do this, the more I realize I probably should have added a gusset because it's folding down this little bit of my flap. So if I would added a gusset, I don't think that'd be happening. Now, having said all that, as soon as we start adding uh, more photos, I think it's really going to be important to add that gusset. So I might even do that on page eight, but this is what it is for page one. I noticed that the larger the album gets, the more important I think those things are. I don't see that happening when I do my eight by eight. So that's it for page one. I'll be back soon, guys. Thanks for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create.